Welcome to the Flow and Flourish podcast. I am your host, Nicole Roan, and if this is your first time here, welcome to the Sister Friend community, which is the safe space to talk openly and honestly about the challenges we face while managing the competing priorities between our personal and professional lives. Many of us are either in corporate, an entrepreneur, or a combination of the two. On top of being moms, wives, caregivers, big sisters, or just the go-to person in our circles of friends and families. Having all that responsibility can leave you overwhelmed and depleted if you don't take inventory of where you're at on a regular basis. This podcast is here to help you get and stay in flow in five major areas that impact your ability to have balance between your personal and professional life and overall increase your capacity for sustainable success. Now, my philosophy is that when you flow effortlessly, you flourish tremendously. And when you do that, it allows you to show up in excellence in all areas of your life. If you haven't listened to the first five episodes I recommend you go back and learn more about the five foundational pillars and how they all tie into helping you create balance in your life while wearing all the many hats that you do. You can also learn a little bit more about who I am, how I ended up in the podcast space, and why you want to join this community. Now, this week, we are closing out the Heart Flow series. Over the last four weeks, we've talked about how Proverbs 4.23 is really the centerpiece of this pillar. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So that means that what you say and do is a result of what's going on in your heart. We talked openly about those relationships that impact and pull on our heartstrings from your relationship with yourself to the relationship with your children and or your significant other. Today, We are going to bring it back to you, my love. So yes, we're talking about you. Chances are that if you're here, you're likely the go-to person in your group of family and friends, aka the responsible one, aka the reliable one, aka the strong one. And you probably like and share the check on your strong friends meme when you see it because you know exactly what this feels like. As women, we often have this superwoman mentality and wearing that cape all the time is both a gift and a curse. And I want to talk to you today from the angle of who's going to save the hero, meaning who takes care of you. Now, if you are a Beyonce fan, have you ever heard the song, Who's Gonna Save the Hero? It's on her, I think I am Sasha Fierce album from like 2011. If you have not, stop what you're doing and go listen to it now because it's literally the meat and potatoes of this episode. Now, I do have the link to the song with the lyrics on YouTube in the show notes, so make sure that you go check it out. My sister is actually the one who told me about it because honestly, I had never even heard it until about a year ago. And I can admit that I backed up off B for a minute, so I hadn't listened to the entire album like I did all the other ones. But when I heard this song, though, it stopped me in my tracks and pierced my heart. I went through hell and back in 2019. And here Beyonce comes, putting it all in the song to capture exactly what I was feeling. I was like, damn, B. She talks about what many of us go through but don't acknowledge or even talk about. And that's being everybody else's crutch and how it takes a toll on you. You end up not sleeping at night. You're burying your feelings. And one day you wake up frustrated, realizing that you don't have a support system, that you are the support system. In last week's episode, I talked about having a sister circle and how that will be part of this week's episode, but I want to expand on that a bit. 
One of my good girlfriends, Lacey Fields, posed this question to me a while ago and asked me, if you're the EMT, who's going to stop your bleeding? So when you're in a hole, who's there to dig you out? Now, I call it my circle of influence. And yes, I did take part of that from the movie Meet the Parents. They had the circle of trust. I call it the circle of influence. Don't judge me. But seriously, who is in your circle of influence? Do you even have one? If not, today I'm giving you suggestions on how to identify and grow your support system. And even if you already have one, when you level up your life, some of the people who supported you before may not be a good fit for supporting the flourishing version of you. So you have to reevaluate and readjust. It sucks. It can be painful and difficult, but it's necessary and it's true. So we will talk about that too. And specifically, I'm going to focus on three areas. The first is going to be what is a support system and a healthy one at that. The second is why you need a support system. And the third one is going to be about how to create or level up your support system. By now, you probably know already that I'm a definition lover. So I want to share with you what a support system is. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it's a network of people who provide individuals with practical and emotional support. When you add healthy to that, it becomes a whole thing. A healthy support system is, in addition to the definition I just gave you, a group of people who can relate to your circumstances. They share similar beliefs, thoughts, and experiences which help them to help you improve your own life. Pretty dope, right? What I learned in doing this research is that there are four kinds of different social supports that each and every one of us need. The first is emotional support. This usually comes from close friends and family, and it's expressed in ways like love, empathy, trust, and caring. This is the one that I'm most familiar with because, yep, I'm an empath, and I feel all the feelings and all the emotions all the time. The second one is instrumental support. And this is something tangible and useful that somebody does for you. It's like an act of service. For example, my husband just recently adjusted his work schedule so that me and the whole family could have a better routine, which includes me being able to work out at that boxing class I was telling you about in social media. Does that make sense? The third kind of support you need and probably use more than you think is informational support. Yes, that includes Facebook and IG if you use them for information. My mom learns everything off Facebook. And yes, I'm rolling my eyes. I'll be like, mom, I have no idea what you're talking about. And she will be like, I seen it on Facebook, didn't you? Mama, you know what? I'm done talking about you, okay? I love you. (laughs) Anyway, social support shows up as advice, sometimes both solicited and unsolicited, and it's suggestions and information you get from friends, family, doctors, your own research, and so on. Now, Lillian is my best friend in the whole wide world, and she is a huge source of information for me. We've been friends since we were five, and I swear she knows everything. If I was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, she would be my phone a friend in a heartbeat. So it's always good to have people that you can count on for information as well. Now, the fourth area of social support is appraisal support. And I like to think about this like having a hype man at a concert or The person or people who can literally change your day or mood just by walking in the room or from you hearing their voice. I am thankful because I do have a handful of these people in my camp and they all meet different but similar needs for me. 
For example, my sister I mentioned earlier in the episode, she is the one who can look at my face and see behind my smile that something is going on with me, no matter how hard I might be trying to be fake okay. She knows me like nobody else on this planet and will tell me to get it together and that she loves me in the same breath. She gives me that tough love, like, you know, the Sour Patch Kids commercial. Have you seen it before? The one where they're like, first they're sweet and then they're sour. (laughs) That's her, but in a good way. Because she's my little sister, I joke all the time and I call her my little big sister. And I honestly, I don't know what I would do without her. So this person or group of people, however it might look for you, will remind you of who you are and whose you are. They're kind of like the version of you that tells you it's okay to feel how you feel, but not to stay there too long. My people make me feel like, get up. Dust yourself off and try again in my Leah voice, and they'll tell me you got this. Overall, this group is really the ones who help you by giving you useful information for self-evaluation and self-reflection, and they will tell you what you don't want to hear too, which, can we be honest, is sometimes the truth. You know, we all need people in our friend groups and social groups that are able to be honest with us when nobody else can. Okay, so now that you know what the major support areas are, do you have support in each of these four areas? For me, it depends on the day of the week. I'm just kidding. But for real, do you know what you need? If the answer is no, that's okay. No shade and no shame. I literally just got my circle of influence together recently. Now, I've had bits and pieces here and there, but over the years, I can say that I have had the pleasure of having maybe one in each at different times. And I cannot begin to verbalize how much of a difference having my support system has impacted my life in a positive way. When I was suffering in silence and battling some of the darkest depression and anxiety I've ever experienced in my life, I didn't even really realize that I was isolating myself. I felt like, I got this, I don't need nobody. I was on my Beyonce again with my me, myself, and I, that's all I got in the end. That's what I found out. And it ain't no need to cry. Took a vow that from now on, I'm going to be my own best friend. Yeah, I was doing all of that, right? But sis, let me tell you something. You need a support system. I don't care how independent you are. When you try to do it all on your own and you bottle up what you're feeling all the time out of fear of judgment, because maybe the last time you opened up, you got hurt by a friend or family member, you end up overwhelmed, depleted, and crying by yourself at night, just like the song says. And fellas, this goes for you too. I know I have a few of y'all listening, whether it's on your own or because the lady in your life is listening. Either way, this is for you too. You need a circle of influence to help you through all the weight you carry on your shoulders that maybe us women don't even understand. With that, I want to get into why it's important to have a support system, aka a circle of influence, because that's a really great segue. According to an article written in a journal called Psychiatry Medical Matrix, I discovered the following. Social support is exceptionally important for maintaining both physical and mental health. Now, I know this is not the health flow pillar, but I need you to listen to this. High quality, also known as healthy, positive social support enhances our resilience to stress. It reduces the trauma of induced anxiety disorders such as post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, and our inability to manage through it. And it medically reduces our mortality rate, 
So it increases your overall lifespan. For women in particular, since we are in a heart flow series, I need you to know that social support literally reduces our chances of getting heart disease. In the second episode, I shared with you that according to the American Heart Association, heart disease, which can be a heart attack, stroke, or heart failure, it is still the number one killer of women and the number one cause of one in three deaths among us. So having support can literally save your life. And if that's not enough of a benefit for you, I honestly don't know what to tell you. If you're one of those sitting back saying, well, eating healthy and exercising can save my life too, so I'm going to just stick to that. To that, I say, do you, boo. But this might not be the place for you because here you really got to be able to get honest with what's going on in your heart and what you've experienced that's making you feel that way. And I'm not saying that you have to take every single piece of information that I give you and run with it, but at least be open to the facts. If you didn't want to create balance and increase your capacity, you wouldn't be listening to me, right? Exactly. Okay. So let's say you reach the conclusion that you don't really have a support system or that where you're at at this point in your life, you need to reevaluate and readjust your circle. Like I said earlier, there is no shame in either situation, and that's what you're here for. Now, there are three actionable steps I want to share with you that you can take starting today to get what you need. You will hear me say over and over and over that you cannot fix what you don't face. So the first step is to really take inventory of what you have and what you don't. Maybe you don't have a supportive family and you're the only child, or your significant other doesn't support you the way that you need him or her to. You have to figure out what you do have. Here, you have to figure out who you do have and what you need from them to build your support system. And this goes for that existing circle too. Who I am today is not who I was two years ago, let alone six months ago. I've had to literally give myself permission to know that it's okay for my needs to change. And sometimes that means your circle changes too. I was gonna say it's not personal, but it is. Because who you are and who you're becoming is personal. And you have to be intentional about the company you keep. There are close friends and family members I have that I used to talk to every single day, but now it's more like once in a while. And it's not because I love them any less or that we fell out or anything like that. It's simply because what I need and the level of support needed for me to get where I'm going has shifted. And so I'm intentional about who I give my time to, and I'm okay with that. Right now, my focus is on myself and my family, just the four of us. And anybody or anything not in alignment with that has had to take a back seat. I have a 17-year-old who I'm preparing for college and adulthood, and I have a five-year-old who just started school in the middle of a pandemic. So he's extra needy. I have my husband who is a recovering alcoholic and he's been sober for a year and a half. And then I have myself and I'm learning how to even make myself a priority. All of that means that what we do and how we have fun is different from what it used to be. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'll have an entire episode on what it means to give yourself permission in the near future. But for right now, do what you got to do to set yourself up and to get the support system you need to actually support you. You don't owe anybody an explanation or an apology, period. Now, number two, I already mentioned this in the first step, but I want to elaborate a little bit more here. Once you've figured out 
who you have or don't have, outline what you need. If you are like me, this might be tough, especially if your needs have been on the back burner for a while or if they're completely non-existent right now. I have always prided myself of putting my kids first and being the reliable or dependable one. And my favorite thing was being I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that means? That was my song. And it actually was an anthem for me for a while. I tricked myself into believing that I had everything I needed, didn't need nobody for nothing, and that all I was supposed to do was take care of my kids. Like, my identity was 100% being a mom. Just because you become somebody's mama doesn't mean you stop being a woman, a human, or that your needs no longer exist. And I'm going to keep it real. I still have trouble saying what I need sometimes because I got so accustomed to leaning on myself. I felt like whenever I did ask for help, nobody would go out of their way, meaning putting themselves last like I was doing for so long. And I was mad and disappointed. So I started telling myself for the longest time that it was a waste of time to even ask anybody. And I used to use it as a shield to not get hurt. And that's where most people get stuck. There is this underlying fear that literally keeps you stuck. For me, this was all the way true, especially when it came to my marriage in particular. I knew at the time that asking my husband to get sober would be like finding a four-leaf clover. I knew that my needs would turn our marriage upside down because he wasn't really in a place where being sober was important to him. So as a result, I dealt with it until I couldn't anymore. I was afraid to be alone. My needs, specifically my health and peace of mind at the time, became more important than anything else, and I had to start dealing with that fear head on. Because I had created this belief that I wasn't worthy of having my needs met, I had to work really, really, really hard to change that belief. I had to shift my mindset and tell myself that I was worthy and deserving of having my needs met, even when I didn't believe it. I did this through affirmations, journaling, prayer, counseling, and wine. And yes, I said wine. All of the journaling, though, it specifically gave me practice in writing out what I needed and who I needed it from. But then I had to actually communicate what I needed to the people I needed it from. And this was probably even harder than writing it out. I didn't want to get rejected or risk getting my feelings hurt, but I live along the lines of a closed mouth don't get fed. So I had to go with the flow. Now, have my needs been met every single time? No, of course not. But I'm acknowledging my needs and I'm expressing them with the expectation that I will at least be heard. And when they can't be met, I take it with a grain of salt and no hard feelings. I no longer operate from the lens of, I would do it for you like I used to, So I'm no longer mad when people don't do for me what I've done for them. It's not a tit for tat. Needs don't work that way. I do have non-negotiable needs and deal breakers though, but that's a different topic for another day. The third and final actionable step I have for you today is for you to seek like-hearted and like-minded people. If you've outgrown friendships and relationships, this can be super tough, especially right now with COVID. I was team no new friends all day until I realized I was isolated, lonely, and depressed. And then reaching that conclusion really made me feel even worse, to be honest. But I had a choice. I could either sit in it and complain, or I could do something about it. 
And one of the most powerful things that worked for me, honestly and truly, was prayer and affirmation. I literally started praying and asking God to send me people that I could have meaningful relationships with that were like-hearted, like-minded, wanting to do some of the similar things that I had on my heart. And I promise you, within days, I met one of my good friends, Sierra, at BMO Harris Bank. And from there, the floodgates opened. Now, I still have a similar affirmation that I say every day because I know who I'm in the process of becoming and where I'm going. And while the Sierras and Lillians of my life will still be here, I know that there are other women I need in my life as I progress in walking in my purpose. I've actually met quite a few of them recently in the Purpose to Platform program that I'm in with Patrice Washington. And I'm going to have quite a few of the ladies on the podcast and on my live. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. Aside from prayer and affirmations, you can also join Facebook or LinkedIn groups. And I know this might seem a little impersonal, but there really is a group for just about everything. And I actually had to go through and remove myself from quite a few groups on Facebook last week because I joined them at a time when my needs were different. And the groups no longer make sense for me to be in them because it's not where I'm going or where I'm at. So don't be afraid to use social media for socializing outside of posting pictures of yourself or your family and scrolling through just because you're bored. All right. I think I've said enough for this episode, so I will stop here. I've given you a ton of information and things to think about as we close out this heart flow series and get ready for 2021. If you do nothing else, as you get ready for a new year and a new you, get yourself a support system. You have to remember that heroes need help too. Listen to that Beyonce song and get you a squad so you don't have to feel like that. Tap into who you already have and please don't be afraid to incorporate new people. Everybody has different people that help them with different things. Not only are you deserving and worthy of quality and healthy relationships, your heart literally needs it. In last week's episode, I talked about toxic tendencies, so make sure you check your circle out for any of those too, okay? Next week, we will be talking all about capacity before we jump into the workflow series. I have some pretty dope women lined up to talk to you about how your workflow impacts your overall capacity and your ability to have balance in your life. So make sure that not only are you subscribed to the podcast so that you're notified when new episodes drop, but also make sure you join my community and email list at NicoleRone.com because I have an exciting new capacity calculator that I am only sharing with those who are part of my community. It's going to help you determine where you are maxed out in terms of capacity and where you have a little bit more wiggle room. And all of this, of course, will help you flow effortlessly between your personal and professional life. Don't forget to connect with me in social media. You can find all of my contact info in the show notes. I absolutely love hearing from you. So please make sure that you connect with me and tell me this week what's your favorite part from today's episode. And please, please, please don't keep this to yourself. Share this with other women who you know need to hear it today. Until next week, I thank you for showing up and investing time into yourself by listening to this podcast. And as always, I look forward to serving you by helping you create balance between your personal and professional life without ever having to sacrifice yourself, your family, and what matters most to you. Talk to you next week. Thank you.